program here. Uh, today, I think I will show you something about dusting and some oil space over the civil vehicles like excavators and so on. Uh, and maybe we will have some time, also some math. Uh, okay, well, we will start with uh, making a prepared uh, some more. Spills that happen uh, over the axis, over the uh, elements that move in the manipulators. In the frame, in the frame. Yes. No, it's, it's the manipulator one. I also, I'm usually starting it by making this place darker with some engine green or something like this. Uh, it's a primer for base for, for the dusting. Mm. For this, I like to use the paints like engine cream, which I beat uh, mud, making a nice structure under the next techniques and phases of this. I just uh, place some of this over these elements, which they later will be there. So over the elements where there are axles that are moving, we're usually seeing a lot of mm. oil and so on, that is quite good. And when it mixes with the dust and so on, it's dark. And it's just, it looks like this. Just a little bit of this, and we can just take this. What kind of pen are you using? Uh, here I'm using the X20 from Tamiya, but as well, it could be enamel or thinner or anything that uh, are good for enamels. So you just roll uh, to uh, this pink and making this. Uh, more irregular, so just look more natural. It's been too much of this. So it's too wet. Seems more irregular, and like some of them must, might be wiped off of some swells here. Yeah.
So it's just a base uh, for the next uh, for the next uh, eight, eight apps. When we work, uh, <coughs> more dust and more oil. Dusting this with over the over the coat, for which I'm using uh, Tamiya Navas. Uh, they they are easy to remove excess and make some mistakes and so on some rain marks over this uh, this paint. I'm usually using some deck tan mix it with both to make it. Uh, Paint is uh, very diluted uh, in heavily. We are using more like uh, dirty water than paint, uh, and it's the best to apply it in more layer than. And, and animals are more delicate, isn't it? Uh, what? Animals that are more delicate. Yes, yes, yes. So why I stopped using acrylics. Yeah? <laughs> acrylics are also good to do this, but I prefer just to uh, use some enamels when you want to uh, later blend it. Some to do some rain marks and dust. And prefer to do it. So it will look even better, as well as uh, the base for this is the best when is the paint is satin or before the dust. I like the most uh, to work with satin paints. Uh, it's because on the 
uh, when the base is uh, lost, uh, the paint doesn't blend so, much, so well. It's easier to wipe it off. And when it's softened, it can be easier to create some efforts. Have you, have you varnished? Or yes, yes, it was varnished with satin, satin more... Uh, acrylic satin? Acrylic satin, acrylic satin from Tamiya. And how okay. long it could? I don't know, I'm usually uh, using varnish only after the decals to uh, save them, secure yeah. them uh, before the rest effects. And I don't like to use more varnish over that because each, each effect can create different a different uh, surface, and you can use it to make the model more interesting. Uh, most enamels are matte, and if each layer makes it more, more matte. Mm -hmm. mm. After the wash, it's all, all already mm, matte. And over the uh, surfaces that are uh, on the top or something, I just uh, try to create some irregular So not in good shape. Using some thinner, only a little bit of this. The paint is only little, little, a little on this. Okay. And and so when you're having this applied, just uh, have some moves to wipe the paint from the up to the down, just like the rain marks would appear like on the spectacles. And for the first layer, is it not a problem with the with the thinner for the uh, for the yellow? Uh, Layer. Yeah, because he varnished it. It was varnished, so and varnished before it, it's going for the for the varnish, it's uh no. I'm using when I'm painting, I'm using mostly acrylic paints, so it's not a problem when the. Uh, but when when you leave it for some time, it should be fine. Yeah, it's, Although it's some, but but when I use a uh, much from the thinner and long time, uh, yeah. then is then is a problem or. It, it could be, but yeah. it should after 24. Mm. It should. It shouldn't be. The Tamiya, should Tamiya paints are really, are strong. Are really strong, okay. and they, I mean, sometimes I even don't use any var any varnish mm. after the painting when Already? I no color. Yes, I think that on Belarus, I haven't used any varnish, so it was a nice a nice shade of this red. I w just I wanted to. Uh, but, it was, keep it. but it was matte, isn't it? It was matte and it was a bit satin. Okay. If you look at this... Because then the hack is a little bit more dense, isn't it? When it's matte, it's just like... Yes, heavy. yes. Mm. When the paint is matte, it looks, <coughs> and it, it looks bowing. Mm. It's good to uh, have some uh, some things uh, matte and something in other mm. warnishes. It just makes more interest, doesn't it? Yes, yes, that's right. And obviously, you can, you can add additional layer and additional. Yes, addition. yes, yes. It depends on how much you would like to have this, how much dust you want. Each, each layer makes more. Real. More real, and so on. This enamel from Tamiya are 
a fast drying really, so it's not a problem to use one layer after one layer. Can so we take a closer look? Yes, yes. It is. So you are trying to just to make it like some remarks. And it's, imp it's important to move the paint uh, up from down, uh, leaving the uh, right angle so it doesn't look uh, like the. the Uh, and on the top, I'm using different, uh, because this was a flat brush that is more uh, better for the... Uh, it's white. It's white, yes, it's white. And, uh, and over the top, I'm just using the tapping to make it and another brush. Also, also it's... So just you try to... Paint would uh, accumulate over the places that are some corners and so on. So as you see, this paint is uh, uh, it's more. The more paint is over the uh, each corner and where the, there are some different. If you can, if you can take it, say it's better. and so on, you're using more dust, as it would. But it's just the first layer, like 
more like primary process, which are effects. Is this the Hasegawa kit? Yes, this is Hasegawa. like dogs and uh, so on, uh, it's good to give a little bit more uh, dust over the corner, like here, where the, some mood would accommodate. And it's good to start from the bottom, so uh, this uh, corner would be just uh, more paint will stay here because the uh, brush doesn't have so much contact with when it was done. As you can see, so the more. One side. Yeah. Okay, and next uh, on the chases and the places that you are want wanted more, uh, I'm then using some pigments. To give some other structure and uh, make it. More dusty. Uh, I'm applying a little bit only. Over the places here. And then I'm using the same thinner to dilute it and blend the surface Thank you. 
So when you are using the thinner over the pigment, the pigments accumulate mostly over what you these corners and you will wear it where you want it the most and give more colors to this whole effect. Different shades? Yes, different shades and so on. Here I'm using mostly the Europe F uh, because I want to uh, do the old mat that is already uh, <coughs> in, that's not wet and accumulate some time ago. This is where you can tap it. Do remember that uh, pigment, uh, you, I prefer to use it as minimal as possible uh, because it changes its shades and you only see the whole effect when it's dry. You can't say how it looks when it's uh, the thinner is still on it. It must be dry. Yeah. And it's uh, a bit hard to uh, wipe it off. And so I replied, most of it stays only just is change the places where it is the most. So as you can see when it was dry, it's really a lot of it. So I will just tap it a little bit more. When the trax goes, takes all the air over there and spills just over there. Uh, such a, such a, uh, when you have pigment, it's uh, really some oil it looks really good on over the this because. Uh, just spills in the all the capillary movements. But, uh, uh, it's look better when the pigment is under the, this. Uh, when I'm using uh, some uh, oil spills and wet wet stains, I like to use uh, uh, it's I think uh, a tiling uh, paint. It's called engine grease, or as you can as well you can use. Uh, fresh engine oil, it's really similar paint, but this is thicker and you can uh, regulate uh, how, uh, how diluted you want. So I'm just using a fine brush for this. such things and we <coughs> really have it diluted to make a uh, really in many layers. It doesn't look good when you apply a thick layer over this. What color is it? Is it black? No, this is engine grease. Uh, this is this one? Uh, this is, uh, no, this is not, it doesn't this, this one. This is this color, mm -hmm. but this one is enamel and this is oil oh, yeah. from the after look. So it's 
good to uh, apply it mostly over the parts that are moving. Some uh, wheels on the pan uh, on the pan sides, uh, you can the tanks. You have the sometimes uh, wheels and so on over the uh, uh, layer. There's some top where the some oils can just drop up. So the it's, it's more like wash. Uh, structure of this paint is more like wash, and sometimes even even more diluted. <coughs> we can blend blend it a bit. So, so the most of paint we can accumulate in the middle of it, and the rest would be uh, more uh, less visible. First layer is just the, the prime for the rest. And after each layer, you are trying to make it smaller and smaller. Well, uh, the uh, the final layers can be a, can be a bit thicker, so it would be more visible and. Example of such trick, so oil leaks. Uh, uh, similar technique I'm using over this parts <coughs> I I have primed before. Uh, here also I'm using the same technique. So mostly on applying it over some structures, roughly where it could accommodate. It doesn't have enough time to dry properly, so it's not the best looking right now. So when you are using this, you are mostly making uh, oil leaks 
on the as a last phase of weathering, mostly after the dusting, after the rust and so on. So the things that you have done before are mostly dry for some time. Last. This well, this paint you can mix with some uh, dark pigments, uh, like black or something, to make it uh, more. Uh, when you are to simulate the, uh, the oil that mixed with the dust, the bust. Yes, yes, it's, it's more like pus. Some paste to create. So I'm mixing the oil paint with some pigment here. Then it's, it's less, uh, it's not so shiny, it's more matte as it would look in the rear of the But it's as well not as matte as the engine grime, that when it, it's dry, it's really, it's really matte, death matte, you can see. Is you can you apply over these elements here. of it uh, look better with the rest of the model. You can use some more pigment when it's applied to make some structure, to make some uh, some more um, to look like some dust and some uh, some sand over this, which uh, just glue to the oil and so on. So well, not so much. And then it's uh, important to blend it more. So it would. So what's the difference? What's the difference? Because there are two disciplines, was in one person at the other side, but this was the only type of one or the other. So as you can see, I'm get a 
nice structure over here. Let me just get a little more blend. We are. Normally there would be some more dust over here uh, when I would do it, so it will blend with this and it would look uh, more grey than black. But for the show I haven't does it so much so As you can see uh, here, you, I create some uh, rough structure that would, uh, that's typical for the civil vehicles where there is a lot of oil. Uh, it needs a while to dry a bit. Over this, mm, it's uh, good to add a little more of the just uh, some more oil, like fresh engine oil, uh, or something like this, to speckle some some more of it, just over it. Uh, it will create a nice, nice structure and nice effects over here. We use this paint. So we, as well, you are using the uh, a little, just a little bit, a bit, and uh, when it's uh, diluted, just like at the beginning of this process, where I show you here, and it's better to check how the paint looks before or over the tower or something uh, to know how much of this paint you have here. So then you will just go back and speckle some of it. As well, I'm uh, mostly using it in many layers. Sometimes I uh, make this process four, three or four times so next uh, next phases, next layers, uh, give more of it. So it's not it's good to don't uh, make it so many of them in one one phase, one, one layer, uh, because it will dilute with the uh, the same it's still the enamel paint. So each one create nice structure together. And as well, the fresh engine oil you can use just out of the bottle. It's heavy diluted and nice too. Don't need to. But because of this heavy diluted, the uh, the spots you are making it's big, so it's better when it's just a little bit of it on the paint, just just tiny amount. Thankful, thankful to this uh, this record. The mud structure have some spots that are that are shiny and looks interesting. It's nice when you have the uh, surface that is all over with the dust. That's mud, and you just take some 
fish engine oil and sprinkle it all over the uh, this surface. Uh, then you can even make it uh, dilute it a little more, so it would, wouldn't uh, give us color, just just different. Mm. Just a shade, like it would be some uh, points that are not dry but wet. So that's why you can blend it a bit. There is. Well, I'm speckled some, just some thinner to give some more spots that are clean or without dust. So well, the same method is used over this, uh, over this uh, uh, leaks foils, so it would be thicker and the places it would like just oil spread over the dusty dusty layer. So if you want to make some uh, smaller uh, smaller points, you just use thicker paint or less over the brush. Because, but you need to remember that when you are using thicker paint, these points would be more visible. Nice to give the shades over the dusty, dusty surface to make it more interesting. Okay, and what I would like to show you more is uh, some some uh, dry mud over the over the uh, dozers or something. Uh, to, for this, I like to use the mud, heavy mud, and tap it tap it over the whole thing. Are you for that? So what, well, what color you painted the? Uh, what? The um, the dozer. Dozer? Can you say again? I couldn't. Hear you. I you. No. Okay. Uh, okay. So this this, this mat, I apply some over the over the paper towel and just tap the x axis of it over. And uh, I'm using something like uh, something like uh, dry brush, 
just to tiny amount of it and tap it. with the places where I want to. So, I scroll now each, each, each. Smarts are, uh, are really fake and they would just uh, give us a nice structure over the thing. So we apply it and then come to blending to wipe off the excess. I don't like too much. It's mostly by, by tapping this with the hole. And if I would use it here over the chases, uh, which I not move, change the angle, I would also use some vertical movement here. But over the thing, I would just prefer to tap because this will create the irregular, uh, irregular uh, uh, strategy. It would be more irregular as it would accumulate. Let's change this. Change the angle it's, it's happened. So it's sometimes like that, like that. So it's not good to use it. If you want to make some old vehicle that's on the some uh, scrapyard and so on, uh, you can maybe you can then you can use more vertical movement. Here, vertical movements to blend it, it will create more. As well, it's, it's good to put some, blend it, and then apply some more just over the places where we want the more mud. Uh, and this mud at the finish is shiny or is uh, It depends on of the product. The dry light is, is, is mud. And it's then, of course, when you use this, I sometimes I mm, make some more oil spills again, but not not in the many spots like before, because when I would just have the pigment and uh, dust applied with eyebrows, I'm starting to make more uh, wet spots with the a little shiny. yes with the shiny ones. Then I applied some mud. And over the mud, uh, at the last, at the finished steps, I'm applying again some more oil leaks over here. As well as over the top, where there is the level, where there is <coughs> not so much of this mud, you can use more, uh, more thinner to wipe off the excess and make it more clean. Just, just some, some marks on it. Over the corner, I use some more of this to simulate the more, more mud. Just heavy. Okay, then I use 
Jesus, and guess what? Just die here while they are Das early to be. And then using another brush. So this is how it looks. Here I would use some more of it to this make more mark. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to finish this model or is it just for the workshop? It's just for the show, for the workshop. So maybe I would buy another one and then I would finish it again. I don't like my, very much the, the layer of the, this orange. I used the Tamiya orange and it was shiny. I don't like to work with the shiny paints. I prefer the satin matte mat ones and mm -hmm. then change them. Yeah. Change them. Nicely, when you have some structure and then apply the oils, it's uh, it happened very yeah, properly. It's best when using this when the mats dry. It still is uh, Give it some few days and apply the mark. Sometimes it's good to leave it for a, a week. Uh, no, not maybe, maybe not so much time, but you know we all have. We are not using this with time, and we have applied some mud 
when it's when it's dry, it really ni look, works nice with the another oranges leaks and so on. You can important to make it in many, many layers. Each layer makes it look better. This it would accumulate in real life. And the techniques I'm using here, I'm using many, very same techniques over the uh, military vehicles. Couldn't be both used. Of course, there are less less uh, oil over them. There are not so many, uh, not so many moving parts, not so many axles. So I won't use these techniques. But uh, work with mud is is the same, and uh, with oil that feels it's also the same. And sometimes it's better not to paint the line with the oil, but just stand, uh, give it, paint, uh, apply it with the uh, tapping motion, so it would be more irregular. Create. Create more regular leak, like it would be in real life. Of course, you can always blend it, but not so. You can must be aware of blending the oils because you always can destroy the previous previous parts, previous elements like dust and so on. So then I. Prefer to use the just a little bit tapping motion. It's, it's really light, not to put too much pressure over it. Okay. So I think this is it, what I was wanting to show you. If you have any questions. So guys, this is I think this is most of what I was wanting to show you. If you have any questions. Hesitate to ask them. Maybe I can. <laughs> How did you learn something new? Interesting. Yes, of course. Thank you for.